So we've just done a basic wash to this connecting rod, which is enough that we can handle it and not get grease on our hands, but it's still not clean enough for a true inspection. So I'm gonna go ahead and process this, and then we'll come back and inspect the connecting rod end as well as the crank pin ends. So there's two measurements that we want to check on our connecting rods, and this is any connecting rod in any engine. The first one is going to be our piston connecting rod bushing, and there's two ways to measure this one. First, I'm going to use my no-go gauges or pin gauges. So the first one I'm going to use, this is the standard size for this rod, and if I put it in, one thing that really sticks out on this rod is I can rock it and move it everywhere. So now that I've checked it with the standard size, this one is our worn out clearance. So if this one slides in, then the piston pin is worn out or the bushing is worn out. So once again, slide that one in, it slid in easily and still has plenty of room. So on this particular rod, the bushing will need to be replaced. The other way to check this bushing size would be to use a split gauge or a bore gauge. So this would be if you didn't have the pins or if you wanted to know exactly the size of this, we would take a split gauge, slide it into the bushing, centralize it and just make sure everything is parallel and plumb. Then go ahead and lock that. I'm going to bring in my micrometer and we're just going to measure what dimension we have on the bushing. Either one of these methods will work to determine whether or not the bushing is serviceable or will need to be replaced. So the specifications for this bushing, it was supposed to be when it was brand new 22.03 millimeters with a discard value of 22.08 millimeters. This one is extremely worn out at 22.324 millimeters, which supports what we saw with the pins whenever we would put our pin in. We can see that it drops in easily and also has a lot of rocking motion, so there's a lot of clearance on that bushing. To measure the big end of the rod, first thing I've got to do is put it into my vise, making sure I'm using aluminum soft jaws so we don't damage the connecting rod, and we need to tighten the connecting rod bolts up to their specified torque before we can measure anything. Once we've got it tightened up, I'm just going to flip it around in the vise. This is just to support it to make it easier to measure. And then I'm going to use my bore gauge, which I've already set at the factory tolerance for measuring the inside diameter. We want to measure it in three places. We want to measure center of the rod, then from side to side, and from side to side because what we're checking for is any egg shaping or ovalities in the connecting rod. The tolerance on this is giving me a specification of 61 to 61.019 millimeters. So I'm just going to measure everything and see exactly what we've got. So the first number that I'm seeing is 61.004 and we're just going to move to the next location. We have 61.002. Then our last number is 61.002. So this rod is in serviceable condition. The hole is within tolerance for ovalities and can be put straight back into service. Now, if you do take some measurements and you see some differences, so let's say the rod had stretched open and you saw a substantially larger 
measurement between the center of the rod and the two side measurements. The way to fix that would be to have the rod closed and honed, in which case they would machine off the parting surfaces which would close the rod down and then remachine the interior of the rod to match the factory specification.